The term John or Jane Doe is used as a placeholder for those who have not yet been identified. According to NAMUS, there are 916 John and Jane Doe's listed in their system as of August 1, 2019. Many of these cases sit unsolved for years, with those closest to the case never giving up hope. While law enforcement may put every effort into solving these cases, sometimes it's armchair detectives who make the major breaks. Here are five does that were identified in 2019. Number five. On June 29, 2001, fire crews were called out to a dumpster fire at the 7900th block of 18th Avenue and Power Inn Road in Sacramento, California. Emergency responders thought it was a routine call out, but while extinguishing the fire, they made a horrific discovery. Inside the dumpster were the charred and burnt remains of a woman estimated to be between 16 and 30 years old. Her autopsy revealed that she was alive when she was set on fire as she had smoke in her lungs. Her cause of death was listed as homicide as it's not known whether the smoke inhalation or the burns she sustained were the cause of her death. She'd been wrapped in a duvet, set on fire, and left in the dumpster to die. Her remains were too charred to make an identification, although the coroner did deduce that she had died just minutes before being discovered. The Jane Doe was anywhere between 5 feet tall and 5'6 and 90 to 140 pounds with either brown or hazel eyes. The most promising identifying features were her teeth. According to the Doe Network, her teeth were in perfect condition with no cavities. She also had porcelain caps on all of her teeth with plastic sealant on them. The doe had also either had orthodontics or was preparing to have them fitted in the near future. Due to the state of her remains, fingerprints were not available. However, DNA was extracted for testing. At first, investigators believed that the doe was black with some European ancestry. The initial composite sketches showed Jane Doe as a white female instead of black, potentially ruling out matches. It wasn't until Sacramento police reached out to Parabon Nano Labs in 2017 for phenotype analysis, which revealed that the doe was black. Phenotyping creates a snapshot of what the person could look like based on their DNA and what characteristics they may have. Following the huge breakthrough thanks to the phenotyping analysis, in 2019, Sacramento police were able to link the evidence found to missing 20-year-old Perrine Gray. Perrine had been reported missing from San Francisco on June 1st, 2001, but sightings placed her being alive as late as 2007. Sacramento police are appealing to anyone with information to contact investigator Greg Wyatt at 1-916-808-0656, quoting the case number 0151826. Number 4. On October 27, 1985, a man and his son were walking in Parker County, Dallas-Fort Worth, near State Highway 51, when they came across the partial remains of an unidentified male in the field of a ranch. The doe was estimated to be 14 or 21 years old, white, male, with brown hair and brown eyes. His weight and height were unknown due to his remains being skeletal. He was wearing a white Union fleece jacket a size small gray jacket, a dark gray jacket, a size small gray shirt, and blue jeans that had a leather pocket trim in size 29-32. It doesn't appear that he was wearing any jewelry, and the only other item he had with him was a coin from 1984. Due to the state of his remains, the coroner estimated that the date of his death was anywhere from 1984 to early 1985. This is backed up by the coin found in his possession, which was dated 1984. The Parker County Sheriff's Department followed any tips and leads which ultimately led to nothing. In absence of a name, they named him John Parker County Doe. Time passed and no new leads came in, leaving the Sheriff's Department to think that this case may never be solved. That was until the NCMEC became involved in the case in 2018. A facial reconstruction was created by the Tarrant County Medical Examiner in 2015, but NCMEC 
was able to offer further assistance in the form of DNA phenotyping. Sergeant Ricky Montgomery commented, It became a kind of a big case for NCMEC, and they selected this case to be a test for Parabon Nano Labs, which does DNA phenotyping. They take DNA and are able to predict their hair color, eye color, and some facial features, and even eyebrows and whether a person had freckles. Thanks to the involvement of Parabon Nano Labs, they were able to create a family tree and utilize forensic genealogy to track any possible relatives of the doe. After a lot of hard work, they were able to track down the parents of William Feigner, who submitted a DNA test to the University of North Texas. It was a match. The John Parker County Doe was officially identified on November 16, 2019, as 22-year-old William Feigner. Born in Brooklyn, William was said to be a naughty child. He was always getting into trouble and his parents wanted to set him on the straight and narrow. In 1984, his parents sent him to work on a horse ranch in California in hopes that he would be able to channel his energy into something productive and get away from a bad crowd. Sadly, this wasn't the case and William got mixed up with the wrong crowd yet again who operated out of California and Texas. A man by the name of Forrest Ethington admitted that he'd killed William because he was worried about him snitching on him. Ethington told the witness that he had to silence him, so he did. He took William out to a secluded Texas ranch and shot him once in the back of the head. While we know William's name, justice will never be served. Before Ethington could be charged with murder, he died of a heart attack in prison at the age of 81. If you have any additional information about William's case, you're urged to contact the Parker County Sheriff's Office at 1-682-229-2230, quoting case number H85010. Number 3 In January of 2019, Dana Dodd was officially identified as the Lavender Doe, finally bringing an end to the 13-year mystery. On October 29, 2006, two men set with the intention of target shooting on a remote oil field in Kilgore, Gregg County, Texas. While they'd planned to spend the day target practicing and hanging out, they made a discovery that would change their lives forever. Near Highway 31 off of Fred Swanson Road, they found the body of a female who had 98% burns to her body. Due to the condition of her remains, investigators had a hard time figuring out her gender, age, and the race of the victim. Later examination revealed that she was a white or Hispanic female, aged 17 to 25, around 5 foot 3 to 5 foot 5, and 100 pounds to 120 pounds. She had blonde hair, although many different variations were offered, such as blonde with red highlights. During the coroner's investigation, he found semen which indicated that she had been sexually assaulted before death. It also provided a possible DNA profile for her killer. Clothing was also recovered from the scene with one tough babe, size 7 or 8 brand jeans with brown and orange stitching being found. They also found a purple shirt and a light purple jumper, leading to investigators calling her Lavender Doe. Her Doe Network profile lists no jewelry and the only other items she had were two $20 bills in her pocket. Beside her body was a gas can that had been used to set her on fire. Again, due to the condition of her remains, her cause of death was listed as undetermined but was thought to be a homicide. Investigators tried tirelessly to identify Lavender Doe. They created facial reconstructions and even tested her DNA against missing women in the area all to no avail. It wasn't until 2018 that the DNA Doe Project agreed to take on her case and raise $1,400 for additional genealogical testing to be performed. This time, they had a match. The DNA Doe Project matched with the first cousin of Lavender Doe, and from there, they were able to create a family tree and find her identity. She was identified as 21-year-old Dana Dodd from Jacksonville, Florida. Dana didn't have a great start in life. Her mother left when she was just a baby and her father was homeless. She bounced around different homes living with different family members. She was known to be involved with drugs and was getting in trouble at age 14. In 2000, Dana left Jacksonville for good and moved to Longview, Texas where she was working as a traveling magazine saleswoman. 
Many have pointed out that this job was a front for human traffickers who picked up young vulnerable women like Dana and took advantage of them. With Dana's identification also came the identification of a possible suspect, Joseph Wayne Burnett. Burnett had confessed to her murder in July of 2018. As of 2020, he's still being investigated by the Greggs County Sheriff's Office. If you have any information about the murder of Dana Dodd, you're urged to contact the Gregg County Sheriff's Office at 1-903-236-8400, coding case number 001-002206. Number 2. Parker, Cole, and Caleb Wilhelm found the skull of an unidentified female in the woods of Westchester, Ohio on March 17, 2015. Due to the snowy weather, the rest of her remains weren't recovered until much later. At first, her brothers who were just teenagers thought they'd found a discarded Halloween decoration. Parker told WCPO News, I remember the smell which prompted us to call the police. This was an actual life, an actual person. She had friends and a family. It stuck with me for a while and it still does. The Butler County Coroner's Office used her skull to create a composite sketch of what she may have looked like. They also used her dental records which they sent off to over 260 dentists in the area hoping that someone may recognize them. The Butler County Jane Doe was described as a white female between ages of 35 and 60, 5 foot 3 to 5 9. She had medium brown hair that was starting to gray and had full upper and lower dentures, making her on the older end of the estimation. Near her body, investigators found glasses, both prescription and reading glasses, size 12 faded glory brand jeans, a white jumper, and a shirt with red and blue stripes. She also had a black fanny pack with lip balm, a Swiss army knife, scissors, a lighter, and a water bottle inside. Along with these, she also had possibly been wearing SAS shoes, which are a brand of shoes popular for walkers who are on their feet all day. They're also said to be quite expensive. In 2018, Butler County investigators submitted DNA in the hopes of using sites like GED Match to find a possible hit, and they did. With the assistance of the Doe Project and Mannix, they were able to track down the Doe's family and DNA samples were obtained from them. On March 6, 2019, the Butler County Coroner along with the Westchester Police Department held a press conference in which they identified the Butler County Jane Doe as 61-year-old Darlene Norcross. Darlene hadn't been reported missing as she was estranged from her family. It was estimated that she had at least one child. Darlene's cause of death is listed as undetermined and Westchester Police are reopening her case to fully investigate. Darlene's family released this statement. After years of effort by various agencies, Darlene Norcross has been reunited with her family. We would like to thank the Butler County Coroner's Office and the Westchester Police Department for their tireless and valuable work in bringing closure to our family. Without them, this day would not have come. The Westchester Police Department is appealing to anyone with information about Darlene's case to contact them at 513-777-2231 or you can email the Butler County Coroner's Office at coronertips at butlercountyohio.org. Number 1 The case of Orange Sox Jane Doe is one that has haunted law enforcement and armchair detectives alike for almost 40 years. On Halloween of 1979, the body of a naked female was found lying face down in a drainage ditch on I-35 in Georgetown, Texas. She was completely naked apart from a pair of orange socks which led her to get the name the Orange Socks Jane Doe. She'd been strangled and sexually assaulted before being dumped in the drainage ditch where she was discovered at 4.30 a.m. on Halloween. Her estimated time of death was placed anywhere from hours to days before her discovery. The Orange Sox Jane Doe was described as a 15 to 30 year old white female standing 5 foot 8 to 5 foot 10. She had 10 inch long brown reddish hair and hazel eyes. Unlike other does, Orange Sox had many distinguishing features. Her legs were unshaven leading investigators to believe that she was either involved with the hippie counterculture 
or she didn't have access to hygiene products. Her toenails weren't painted and were said to be unusually long. Her fingernails were dirty and showed no signs of being taken care of apart from a coat of red nail polish. Doe had a one quarter inch long scar under her chin, healed insect bite scars, and unique earlobes. With her, she had two matchbooks from different hotels, one from a Motel 6 and one from a Holiday Inn, which investigators were able to track down to being in Henrietta, Oklahoma. To further back up the fact that Joe possibly didn't have access to basic hygiene products was the presence of a homemade sanitary towel. Due to all of the factors above, investigators theorized that she was either homeless or a hitchhiker who just happened to come across the wrong man. If you've seen The Confession Killer on Netflix, then you may be familiar with Orange Sox's case. Serial killer Henry Lee Lucas confessed to her murder in 1982, although there's much speculation as to whether he's the real killer. While he was convicted of her murder, he later recanted his confession, claiming it had been taken under duress. The big break in the case came when the DNA Doe Project released a brand new composite sketch which caught the eye of Deborah Jackson's sister. Deborah Jackson left her family in Abilene, Texas in 1977 to travel around Texas and find work. She eventually settled and started working at a Ramada Inn in Amarillo, Texas in 1978. With the new sketch, Deborah's sister couldn't shake the resemblance and contacted the DNA Doe Project and the Williamson County Sheriff's Office. She provided a DNA sample and in August of 2019, it was confirmed that the Orange Sox Jane Doe was 23-year-old Deborah Jackson. Further testing on the orange socks Deborah was found to be wearing revealed two male DNA profiles. At this time, it's unknown whether these samples are good enough for testing. The same profiles were also found in fingernail scrapings and pubic hair samples, meaning that hopefully justice may be right around the corner for Deborah. Her family told news outlets that they hadn't reported her missing as they thought she was doing just fine with her new life and would eventually reach out to them when she was ready. In 2019, Sheriff Chody of the Williamson County Police Department said it was too early to identify a suspect in Deborah's murder. If you have any information about the death of Deborah Jackson, you're urged to contact the Williamson County Sheriff's Office at 512-943-1389, quoting case number 79101116. You can also contact Natalie Murray at the Sheriff's Office at natalie.murray at wilco.org. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, be sure to click that like button. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell to keep up to date with all of our future uploads. But I've been Ty Knotts, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.